What's going on, YouTube world and YouTube tribe? Welcome back to Little Big Man Gaming, bringing you the final review for the not the final review, but the a review for the season finale episode of Legends of Tomorrow. As you saw, it's called The Fungus Among Us. Um, yeah, I'll jump right into it. The synopsis reads. When Sarah realizes Bishop's plan, Ava convinces Sarah to allow the Ledgers to make exceptions to the rules to help fight back. Sarah and Ava make an important decision but need the help of the team to pull it off. So, um, picking up where the last episode, I think they did like a little recap of the last, um, how the last episode ended. And we get to see Basically, the answer to the fates of the two of the two characters that I mentioned, the uh, the characters involved. You know, we got to know the face of John Constantine, um, uh, uh, Rory, and Spooner. So we learn, we learned that. Uh, so we learn. So what we learned from last week that Spooner is really the. Uh, in case y'all didn't see it, go see it and come back here. But. Spooner is the time is the one that's time displays, not the mother. You know, I I left that open end in the last one, but this one, you know, for the sake of the story, I have to reveal that Spooner is the one who was sent through time into the future to live instead of being instead of being the opposite, instead of being her mother was sent to the past. She was actually sent to the future, and we found that you know Spooner is basically. Dying because she was connected to the uh, the fountain of, the fountain of Imperium, just like Constantine was connected to the fountain of Imperium, along with um, along uh, along with you know the protection of the Earth. And uh, we see that Roy survived his ordeal. You know he did. And the blast just knocked him back towards um, towards Ava, and then didn't do nothing. He ended up saving the baby, and. Um, they in you know uh, uh, Kayla is basically surprised to see that they was they were sacrificed themselves to say um, the babies and she wondered why and they said because this is uh, it's Rory's babies that means they family they he's family and it means they family so Rory is basically not you know Rory basically made it clear that he's not going anywhere he, that he failed to be in his daughter's life. He tell because Kayla was like, why, you know, why are you so concerned with being a parent to the babies? You know, like, where they come from, the mother is the ones who raised the kids alone by herself. And she said, he said, because I failed to be in my daughter's life and I was lucky enough for her to let me back in that life and allow me to be her father. So, but he said, but I'm not going to make the same mistakes with them. Um, they try to fix the ship to get the ship operational thanks to uh, Bishop uh, Explosion. Bishop Explosion uh, basically um, Bishop Explosion basically damaged the ship, and they need to fix it so they could get the traveler to get, to catch up and try to undo all this mess. And that they said, you know, Bishop couldn't have went far because he doesn't have he doesn't have, uh, you know. Kelly you know, even mentions, you know, you you guys are stranded. I'm not stranded. Uh, I had my own time ship, but then you realize Bishop took the ship and flew off. So now Kayla is stranded too. Uh, Ava and them trying to figure out what Bishop, figuring out what Bishop did and how he did it. You know, they they uh, Astra tells them that Bishop was the reason why that Constantine died because she put when when Lauren, uh, Lauren Constantine she explained to them how Constantine was able to be pure. Uh, was able to take up serum to make him pure enough for the founders to choose him, but and and doing so he didn't realize that uh, Bishop had po had poison within the serum that was killing him and the fountain at the same time, and since he was and, and it was killing uh, Spooner, so they figured out a, they figured out a way to save Spooner, which is by going back in time and kidnapping a young uh, uh, Bishop. Who figure out how to uh, make an antidote to cure uh, Spooner, and Spooner got better, but the uh, but the uh, thing, but it didn't get better. But the finding of appearing didn't get better, which is just a gigantic space mushroom, and they realize, you know, Bayrad makes a return. He realized that the mushroom that was left where Con where the Constantine was, 
he realized that Constantine was in the mushroom speaking to him, and and he tells everybody, "Hey, look, if if I, I was right, you know, I think he tried to explain to uh, to his sister uh, uh, Zari that uh, Constantine was still alive within the mushroom, but she wouldn't believe it." And then she told him that he, and then she was like, look, he really is alive because you just have to eat the mushroom and you will see Constantine. And they think he's just like on one of his little, you know, being high from eating mushroom type things. And he was like, no, no, it's nothing like that. He told me to so I could talk to him. So they, uh, they also came up with the same plan because thanks to, uh, Sarah figuring out what Bishop plan was. Bishop plan being that he plans for the the Earth to be eradicated, and that the only two living beings on the Earth on the planet will be himself and uh, Sarah. He he wants Sarah himself to be the Adam and Eve of a new uh, era of humans. Uh, so he so they devise a way to uh, they they try to figure out how to stop it, but only the only thing they could uh, but they had no ideas. So, so Baderat basically, that's what he tells everybody to eat the mushroom because John Conti knows how to fix all of it. And they they find out that the uh, Fountain of Imperium is basically, thanks to uh, uh, Spooner, the Fountain of Imperium doesn't deem humans worthy anymore. But, but thanks, because, thanks in part to John Constantine, he doesn't deem humans worthy anymore because he, he knows not the fountain, he knows that it could be tricked into thinking that somebody is worthy so you don't think it thinks all humans ain't worthy so and the only thing to heal it and the only thing to heal they have to heal it not just the physical aspect they have to heal the spiritual aspects of it and that's what Constantine comes in uh, once uh, they come up with a plan and the plan is is that since um, Bishop knows everything that Sarah is thinking he uh, they realize that Sarah they had to do. They had to do the opposite of what Sarah would do because that's the only thing that Bishop would uh, account for. Because he would only account for whatever um, Sarah would do, but not what they, not what she wouldn't do. So, in in a sense, they come up with a plan to do everything opposite of what Sarah would do, and it works. But it turns out that they had a lot more problems than they realized. That a whole bunch of space alien pods come down and they might be outnumbered. So Sarah and them make a rash decision. Sarah as uh, as um, Ava to get married now instead of later. She wants to get married right now. So they, you know, she's like, "What? You know, we can't do this right now because you know the wedding got to be perfect." I had this whole idea for being a perfect wedding, but then she realized. No, Sarah convinced her, like, we're not perfect, and we've never really been perfect, and that's the reason why we are perfect, because we're not perfect, and we and this is the perfect way of doing something zany and crazy like this. So they, they and Sarah, and they only have four hours till sundown, and Sarah realizes that, you know, okay, fine, we do, that's do it, you know, that's, um, that's get married, <laughs> apparently, in an alien apocalypse. And that's a saying as the legends goes. So they decided to uh, fix the running up. But not before uh, Sarah gets the root, realize that Bay Rab was telling the truth. Uh, Sarah then, I'm I, I'm kind of mixing up the story just so you guys doesn't don't know how it actually goes. In case you want to go watch it for yourself to see how the story actually went in order. So I'm just mixing it up just to throw you guys off of what, uh, what came where. Um, Sarah actually is along with the, uh, mushroom and she hears, uh, John's voice and she's, you know, she hears it whispering and calling to her. So she's like, John, John, what are you? And she, he directs her to the mushroom. He said, eat the mushroom, eat me, you know, eat the mushroom. And she basically, and she gets in and eat the mushroom and she is like teleported into the, inside the mushroom to see John Constantine sitting there in like a pure uh, light version of his clothing and he basically tells her that um he basically t tells her that his uh that he's the only he's the only thing that's keeping um excuse me he's the only thing keeping the fountain of Imperium alive basically basically the fountain of Imperium 
is is hanging on by a thread because of what John Constantine did, and he's using his soul to keep it alive, to keep Spooner alive, to keep everything from falling apart completely because he knows how to save it. Sarah tells him they have a plan to save Spooner, but he said that will only heal the physical aspects of the fighting of Imperium. You need to heal it spiritually, and he said the answer to do this is the answer to everything, the answer to life and all that type of stuff. And she, uh, she, she, he whispers something to her, and she comes out of, she comes back from out of the mushroom and tells everybody that Bay Red was right. She spoke to Constantine, and Constantine told her how to do it. She knows how to save, how to save everybody. And they're like, "What? What is it?" He said, "John Constantine told me that the answer is," and they like, you know, they all get close and ready for it. She said, "We are all connected," and. They like she they you know there is like oh right you're high like you know the joke is that's like a um that's like a high joke it's like a joke when people make when they're high they think everything's all connected so it's like when people talk like that they're like oh yeah you're high so. But then uh, Sarah, like, it sounds so, it sounds so epic and dramatic when he tells me that. When he said it, she basically said it sounded better when he said it. Uh, but yeah, they come up with a Zayden plan. They end up save, saving Spooner, and they end up putting a shotgun ready together. But things don't go as planned as usual. They get, I think they got to the. It was beautiful at the start. The start of it was beautiful. Everything they get to the, if anybody have any objections, and of course, um, evil uh, uh, present uh, bishop. So that the, the uh, even the past bishop was there, but uh, present uh, bishop shows up and basically turns everything into dark. Somehow, he somehow made nighttime come sooner. It tells him that. Uh, that he, you know, nobody's going to be left in the world but him, and um, but him, and um, and Sarah, and he, he's like nothing's going to stop that. And he said, but he said, you know what? Where's a wedding without some wedding crashers? And the pods for the aliens open up. Um, they uh, and uh, they they was getting ready to stand the fight till they realized it was a. Arm, it wasn't just them, it wasn't just that little group of pods, uh, army of pods that they saw. It's a, actually a whole platoon of armies that was busting out of the forest. So they realized it was more than what they thought it was. So they had they go inside Spooner's uh, house, her family house that her mother built for her, and they, they hold down the fort and try to fight them off. And this is where John Constantine, we are all connected, comes into play. See, they realized that uh, because in an argument about what to do, Spooner tells tells everybody to stop arguing, and she accidentally like he uh, they Bay Rat had got bitten by the aliens, and um uh, this this is how uh, uh, Sarah died on the planet because she reveals it, and this is how I died. I got bit by one of the aliens, and they give you like a, this this affection, but the only, is only, the only way she thinks to uh, stop the affection is cut off Bayrad's um, arm. But they was arguing about it, but uh, Spooner told them to stop arguing, and she realized she still got powers, and now her powers have all switched everybody's ability to the others. And they realized this is what Constantine meant by, well, at least part of it, by we are all connected. And she was able. To, she was able to use the ability to get the help. Find out the alien. They would switch. They would switch everybody's ability. If somebody got bit, they would switch uh, Sarah's ability with them to allow them to heal, um, and so forth and so on. And then they was like, "Well, we're gonna die. This we're gonna die together." And and and, um, and then uh, Nate like, "Wait a minute! You never got married. We never. You never did the I do. So technically, you're not married." So uh, Kayla. Who was there with the child and children and decided to stay and fight, even though she'd been trying to escape throughout the whole episode? Uh, who has a check heart? She turns she turns into an alien form and before turning into an alien form, she tells them they they better hurry up with it before she changed her minds. Then she turns into an alien form to hold on to hold off the aliens, giving them uh, just enough time to get the fans getting married before they died. 
Um, she it, she does do that. She uh, she does give them enough time to get married, and something wonderful happens. Something wonderful happens, and basically that was the key to everything. Something wonderful happens once they get uh, married, and then, which is then leads to the cliffhanger of. Or the ending of the, you know, everybody celebrating. We see the send off for Roy, uh, McRoy's character. I thought his, I didn't realize that his, um, uh, that the dude who played Roy was actually going to be in the, uh, series, be in the season throughout the whole season. I thought he was going to be up until a certain point and then leave. But he actually was, he he went through the whole season. And then that was like, the end, it was like his send off. He got, his end, it was his send off as he, as he realized that he wanted, now that he's a parent, he wants to be a parent more than a legend. And realized he, uh, that's what his exit departure was. You know, he got to, he went to go be with Kayla and be a parent. Um, the, uh, the legend's now happy, you know, and and that they, just, they avert a disaster. They get ready to go to the uh, ship and something happens to the ship, which is the cliffhanger leading to the next season. So, if anything, if I get this, if I get this episode, anything, this episode got a big. No, I'm generous. I give it a big nine big ups because it wasn't a, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a perfect ten, but it was, you know, for its zaniness and its wackiness, it was the, it was what it needed to be. So it, it got a nine big ups for me. I had, you know, I had no plot error. I had no, no I'm glad Bay Rad finally was able to show after being missing for, I think, like two or three episodes. Um, but, yeah, the episode was good. You know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this little cliffhanger and what, and what the possibility for the future it may hold. Plus, I already know that the Armageddon, um, that they, they announced that the crossovers are coming back. But instead of being like a multi-story over a couple of se over a different shows crossover, it's gonna be it just the crossover is gonna take place as the first like four or five episodes of the Flash, where it's gonna have people from the different shows. On, but it's, like I said, it's just gonna be f uh, five, four or five episodes of the Flash before it goes on into the whatever the se the, the next season of the Flash would be about. But yeah, they call they call it Armageddon. But that's it. That's all I got. And if you enjoyed this video, hit this button up there in the upper right corner for all of my uh, reviews. And if you really enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button so you get notified when I drop videos. And as always, hit any one of these videos for more of my amazing content. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I I'm out. I'm going to take me some well-deserved break. I've been in your face. I think I uploaded every day last week and up until now. Like, I've been uploading crazy. I got to take me a break to recharge the juices. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a Nintendo Day Wednesday. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I might be back. I'm going to take a break, but I'll probably be back, like, Saturday, maybe. Friday or Saturday. Depends on how it feels. Friday, Saturday, and we'll see what type of games I continue to play. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Peace. See you in the next one.